Hey guys, we're talking about tone on electric violins today, and I hope we can clear up a couple of misconceptions that we hear from a lot of people. Um, one of the things that we'll get is somebody will buy a new violin after having an old violin for a bunch of years, and they're like, yeah, I want to upgrade, and they get the new instrument in, and, they're, and they'll call us and go, man, it just, it doesn't sound like my old violin. It doesn't feel like my old violin. How can I make it sound like my old violin? And that's kind of the wrong question. You don't necessarily want to make it sound like your old violin. You want it to sound good, right? And good is not a point. Good is a, is a region. There's a bunch of different sounds that are good sounds. And I think sometimes people get a little hung up on what the old instrument sounded like, and they're used to hearing that in their ear, and that becomes the singular definition of good tone to them. The reason there's a bunch of different instruments here is because they all sound different. Most of the guitar players you know will have a whole stable full of guitars. And you say, which one's your favorite? Well, I don't know. It depends on what I'm using it for. This one is better for this thing, and this one's better for this thing. And they all sound good, but they all sound different. So we want to make sure that we're aiming at good tone and not just trying to find a very specific singular point, right? Does that make sense? So when you've got two different instruments, they're going to sound different. A YEV is not going to sound like a wave. They both sound good, but they sound different. The YEV is going to be a brighter, clearer, thinner sound, and the wave is going to be sort of a darker, warmer, fatter sound. And they're both good for what they're good for. You might even want to own both if you want to sort of do two different things. And a question will be, well, how, how can I sort of make that YEV sound more like a wave? It's the wrong question. How do we make that YEV sound as good as possible is the right question. And think of this more like we're working with uh, sculpture. You're starting with a block of marble. And if I've got a block of marble that's two foot by two foot by two foot, I can't have a sculpture that's three foot by three foot by three foot. I can't add to it. I can only subtract and I can't change the material. No matter how much I work on that marble, it's not going to turn it into ice, right? So I can, I can chip away at things, uh, but I can't add to them. You can't make something that's thin fat. You can make something that's fat thin, but you can't make something that's thin fat. It's not the same with people, by the way. Um, but with sculpture, we want to think about our tone the same way that we think about uh, sculpting. Um, also, you want to embrace what you have. The instrument sounds the way it sounds. It's kind of like, that is a little bit like that with people. That friend that you got, that is who they are. Now, you, you know, you might be able to teach them to maybe be a little more refined in public, but underneath, they are who they are. And you got you just got to, you know what, you're my friend and I love you warts and all. And, and you're going to have to do that with your violin. That's, you can work with what you've got, but you can't fundamentally change. A Forte Vio is going to sound like a Forte Vio. That's a good thing, by the way. But it's, it's going to sound the way it sounds. And if, if you like that sound, then that's what you've got, and that's what you're going to work with. So where does tone come from? The first thing is the player. So if, if, I put, if I pick a given player, maybe your favorite player is, I don't know, whoever they are. If I put one of these instruments or all of these instruments, one at a time, in that person's hands, it's going to sound like that person playing each one of those instruments in succession. The instruments are going to sound a little different, but they're all going to sound like that player playing that instrument. Okay, so player is the biggest piece. The instrument is the next biggest. If you're, a, if you're a consumer and you're buying an instrument, obviously you're not going to change the way you play a whole lot. Um, so the, the biggest choice that you can make on tone is the instrument itself. And we want to always start as close to the source of our tone as we can and player, then instrument. You say, well, I can maybe put some effects on it and make it sound completely different. Yeah, but you're still like that, that NS Design violin is still going to sound like an NS Design violin through compression and EQ and distortion. It's going to sound different than a 3D Various violin through compression and distortion and reverb, okay? So the instrument itself does matter. Then the effects, the amp, the bow, all those, all those sort of things. Within the instrument itself, I've seen a couple of misconceptions here on the internet where people go, well, the only thing that matters is the pickup. That's not exactly true. It's not even close to true, actually. So the pickup is probably the most important thing in your tone, but strings matter. 
Ilkanoni strings do not sound like helicore strings, do not sound like tonica strings, do not sound like dominant strings. They are going to sound different. The body of the instrument, the material that the body is made out of. We just did a, a video with ETJ violins and made out of two different woods. They sounded different. We hear the same thing with Jordan violins. John Jordan makes a lot of violins out of a lot of different kinds of wood. They sound different. They all sound good, but they sound different. Remember, we're not trying to find, good is not a singular point. Good is a, is a region. Uh, the preamp that's inside the instrument, if it's an active violin, makes a difference. With a bridge violin versus a, a bridge dragon violin, the major difference between those two is the preamp, and it makes the instrument sound different. Uh, even something as seemingly insignificant as the fingerboard material does make a difference. So uh, I just hope that's been encouraging to you. If, if you've got a couple of different violins and you're thinking, how can I make one of these sound like the other? You don't want you don't want them to sound like another. The reason you have two different violins is so you can have two different sounds. And we want to sort of chase down good sound with each one, but don't, don't narrow your thinking into thinking that there's only one particular sound that sounds good. There's a lot of different sounds that sound good. And pick one that, that works well with that instrument. If it's a bright instrument, then we want to go with some bright colors and tones for that instrument. If it's a dark instrument, then we're going to use that for darker colors and tones. So... I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps you.